Hey guys, welcome to Miller's Planet, Jay here. Uh, I've been working on this coil gun for the past couple months, and by the way, quick update on that at the end. But if you've ever tried to make a coil gun, you'd know that you'd need a way to get that small DC voltage from your battery pack all the way up to the hundreds of volts needed to charge your capacitors. But obviously not all of you are in the middle of building a coil gun. As you can imagine, this could be useful for a lot of things. Now, if this was AC, we could just step up the voltage with the transformer. Small voltage goes into the primary, the tiny people inside start stomping on their Google boxes, a large voltage comes out of the secondary. Boom, one component gets the job done. So nice, so simple. Not for DC though, it's a lot more complicated. For DC, you'd need something called a step up boost converter. Uh, they sell these things on Amazon, but I mean, come on, why, why even exist? I would much rather just make my own. I'm sure you would also. So today that is what I'm gonna be showing you how to do. So on to the meat and potatoes, how do they work? So this is what the circuit looks like for a typical boost converter. Small voltage source over here, an inductor, a transistor, a diode, a capacitor, and crucially, a square wave controlling the gate of the transistor. More on that in a minute. I'm gonna trace out a path for the current. It starts at the battery, goes through the inductor here, and when that happens, a magnetic field builds up in the core. Current goes through the transistor and back into the battery. This of course happens only when the transistor is on, during the high part of the square wave. During the low part of the square wave, the transistor is closed, the magnetic field collapses, this sends current through the diode and into the capacitor. And you know, like charges repel, so the positive charges on the other end of the capacitor go right back into the battery and the voltage from the inductor is stored. Then this cycle repeats. A high signal comes in at the transistor's gate, the transistor turns on, current flows from the battery through the inductor, magnetic field builds up, current goes back into the battery, transistor turns off, magnetic field collapses, current goes through through the diode and gets stored in the capacitor. And as the cycle repeats, the voltage on the capacitor increments. So let's elaborate on this square wave. To produce a square wave going to the gate of my transistor, I used a 555 timer. It's a really convenient little chip that only needs like three external components to work. Uh, two resistors and a capacitor, plus an extra capacitor if you want to block out noise. By changing the values of those components, you can change the frequency. As you can imagine, a higher frequency means that your transistor is turning on and off at a faster rate, less time standing there naked waiting for your capacitor to charge. High frequency good. These chips have three modes, monostable, bistable, and astable. Astable is the only one that produces a square wave, so the other two are irrelevant right now. To get your chip to be astable, this is what the typical setup would look like. For my R1, I chose a 10 kilo ohm, for my R2, a 100 kilo ohm, and for my capacitor, I chose a ceramic 1000 picofarad. In the optional capacitor, I just used another 1000 picofarad ceramic. It's just to block out noise. And then the rest of the wiring. The output will look something like this, a nice little square wave. If you want, you can do the math. If you need a specific frequency, I did the math because math is fun, and I got a period of 0.14553. One over that is the frequency, so that's 6.87, and that's 6.87 kilohertz because my resistance was in kilo ohms. Okay, back to the boost converter. For high power, you want your diode and your inductor to be beefy. I have no other way to describe them. For the inductor here, one side gets the positive rail and the other goes to the transistor's drain. For the diode, the positive leg also goes to drain and the output goes right to the positive terminal of the capacitor. For my transistor, I'm using a 51N25 MOSFET, 250 volts, probably overkill, but whatever, and a 10K resistor for its gate. Also going to gate is the square wave from the chip and source just goes right to ground.
Well, testing went well. I'm definitely gonna be using this for the coil gun. Uh, right, coil gun update. I can now scratch off battery and boost converter from my to-do list and it feels amazing. My massive SCR modules just got here. So now I can try setting up the infrared sensors so I can have sensor feedback tell the SCRs when it's time to turn the capacitors off. After that, I'll work on making a barrel for the coils and design. Very exciting. If you want to support me in my efforts, I'll leave my Patreon down in the description. Shout out to Phil and Cyrus for your support. If Miller's Planet has a heaven, you are definitely getting in. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for updates. See you next time. Bye bye.